just for a brief synthesis of what we talked about last week, we had the pleasure to hear a great keynote from educational consultant, writer, and PBL advocate Susie Boss about how we can move from catalyst to change, focusing on three really powerful case studies that get deeply at the issue of how we integrate all education stakeholders, whether that's parents, students, or educators in this work. Um, and we also in our breakout room started on a discussion that's very apropos of our conversations today about how we can ensure that students are involved in these conversations and in the broader educational transformation process. Um, so we heard a lot of different ideas. Most of these rooms focused on the importance of valuing students' knowledge and expertise. As we often say on the student voice team, students are the key stakeholders and the primary recipients of education policy. Um, and we talked about the importance of including students as co-designers in the learning and assessment process. And we talked about a lot of different ways that we can work to highlight that importance, whether that's focusing on teaching best practices or system-wide changes that might be necessary to integrate student voice. Um, and these are themes that we're hoping to expand on a lot more today in our mini keynote. And so with that, I'll turn it over to Autumn. Hi. Um, so how we define student voice is recognizing and acting upon the fact that students are the primary stakeholders of our education and should be partners in shaping it. And so we think it's important to uh, define meaningful student voice. After a decision has been made, it's much more reactionary um, in the way that really you're just soliciting feedback like a survey or maybe a focus group or just a face-to-face -face conversation. And it's really the next level of student voice, but it's typically a response to someone else's agenda. Still, it can unleash some candid voice and perspective. And if it's taken seriously by the people who are seeking that feedback out, then it can push the status quo. One step up from there is presence and participation, which really kicks things up a notch. So at this level, you're actually attending meetings where real decisions are being made and students are being included in the conversation, uh, not just after a decision has been made, but when things are being framed or planned. And then if you don't think that you can get even meatier from there, then you can look at partnership where students have a formal structured role in decision making. And it usually depends on an adult leader who understands why and how to work with youth and complementary or co-equal ways. So students are really on the same level as the adults making decisions. And then the absolute highest level of meaningful student voice is the one where students are working often, but not always with adults as co-equal partners. So we call this activism and leadership. So they're working with adults to identify and address issues and also to spread that and educate others. And so even though this is the highest level, tokenization can still occur if we're not focusing on equity and if we're continuing, continuing to demote students to auxiliary roles. So if we want this to be the highest level of student voice, we need to emphasize that students are equal co-designers in the process. And so we love if you could um, take a minute in the chat or on Twitter um, and just kind of answer the following question. So how does your own experience feeling heard or unheard as a current or former student influence your feeling about our education system today? <laughs> 